Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. It's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, December 16th, 2019. Oh my God, what's going on? Holy shit, there's only fucking nine days left. Nine days until Christmas. You know, that's what they always do. There's only nine more shopping days until Christmas. They used to do that all the time. They never counted down to Hanukkah. You know, there's only fucking six more days till Hanukkah. Two more nights and then it's Kwanzaa. They never did that. They put all the pressure on the Gentiles. <clears throat> ah, fuck, I'm sick. I was fighting it off. I was I was doing the emergencies and then I was fucking drinking plenty of fluids and everything was going great. All right. Everything was going great. And then last night we had a big holiday party here at the uh, at the uh, at the house. You know, it was a fucking great one. Oh, we, we had we had a great one. I can't believe my daughter slept through it. We had the fucking UFC in one room. We had adults, you know, mingling and mangling, whatever the fuck they do, right, in another room. And then we had uh, outside, I had like, at one point there was like 20 fucking guys smoking cigars. (laughs) And old stupid Bill went out there without a hat on. Old bald Billy. Hey, fellas, what's going on out here? Stupid. You know, I had a nice little fucking sweater on Christmas ensemble on. I felt like if I put the hat on, it was going to ruin. I went all Hollywood. You know, I didn't put my health first, and now I'm paying for it. Um, this fucking thing has been, you know, you ever watch, you know, I've been watching these fucking animals killing other animals lately. I don't know why I'm watching it. It's fucking me up in the head. You know, whenever I go to do Rogan's podcast, he's always like, dude, you see that bear that ate that fucking moose alive? It's like, no, I, I, I don't I don't want to see that. And then they put it on. Dude, fucking bears. Jesus Christ. You know what? The, you know, I understand when a reptile doesn't kill something before it eats it because reptiles, they're not they're fucking dopes. They got small brains. They don't know what they're doing. They just grab onto something. Their facial expression never changes. Then you get to mammals. We all got, you know, we got emotions. You know, our eyebrows move. Right? These fucking bears, they just grab shit. And then they just hold it down and start taking chunks out of the backs. You know, I have a whole new appreciation for that Leonardo DiCaprio movie where that bear was holding him down and fucking throwing him. That's exactly what the fuck those things do. Jesus fucking Christ. Those are the goddamn baboons when they get the little gazelles. Just fucking snap its neck. How fresh does the meat have to be? I don't know even what the fuck I'm talking about here. And so I went outside. And I was fighting this shit off. Like, yeah, so I felt like, you know, like one of these fucking asshole animals grabs another one and you're rooting for, come on, man, get away, get away, get away. And you, they, you know, that fucking elk. Every time he'd charge him, the fucking bear would run away. And then he just, let's just keep doing that. Keep doing that. Stab him right in his fucking furry ass. They did. And all of a sudden the bear came up. Hey, how you doing? You know, I can't talk to you for a second. He puts his fucking arm around his back and then that was it. That's why this cold has been for like, I don't know, three, four fucking days. And I thought I fought it off. You know, I was being a good boy and uh, and I didn't. So now I feel like fucking shit, you know. My daughter, she, I don't know, she was playing with some kids. Fucking, you know, they're at that age. It's just like a... F- she comes home with something, then she gets it, and then it goes through the fucking house. And I, I thought, you know, they should start making those. They should make like parental hazmat suits, you know, for when your kid gets sick. Because you still want to, you love your kid, you still want to. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I did. I came into her room, and she was coughing up a storm. She was laying there and didn't want to get up. And I was like, what do you want to do? You know, she stretches with me in the morning. It's hilarious. Because she makes the same noises I make. Like, she thinks part of stretching is going, oh. <laughs> she doesn't need to make those sounds. But she'll say, Dad, I'm stretching. Oh, right. So uh, she didn't want to do that. And I could tell she was run down. So I was like, uh, hey, you want Dad to, you know, lay down with you? She's just like, yeah. So we're just hanging in there, making jokes, making each other laugh. And uh, I think that's where I got it. That was it. That was fucking it. So, and plus I was run down, fucking running all around. But, um, anyways, you know, I was just watching the fucking TV and they, they got this thing. It says, hey, you know, this commercial comes out. Hey, don't give up on the polar bears. 
you know, don't give up on the polar bears. It's like, I, who the fuck said I gave up on the polar bears? I haven't given up on anything. So what the fuck am I supposed to do about a polar bear? Why don't, why don't, I mean, I, I would literally need a fucking army of people. The level of bloodshed in world leaders that I would have to take out in order to save fucking polar bears. It's just like, I mean, I am too far down the fucking road in my life to go that route. Stand up comedian turn rebellion leader. Yeah. All you fucking people out there scraping together your nickels and dimes to save these fucking, these, these, these animals. What you need to be doing, you got to put together some sort of group, okay, that's going to fucking walk into one of these oil corporations like a goddamn, like De Niro and the Untouchables with the baseball. That's what you're going to have to fucking do because these people don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. They don't think it's their fault. They don't believe it. They're fucking passing it off, and they fucking own the government. There you go. There you go, all right? Fucking sit there, give me a lecture. Oh, I don't give up on the polar bears. I fucking love polar bears. Fucking cunt. As long as I'm, you know, as long as they're, they're, they're fucking up north. I don't like them being in a zoo, okay? I think they, they should be able to fucking wander around where they're supposed to be. Up top, top of the planet, you know? I relate to them on one level because I am the same color. Um, don't give up on polar bears. What the fuck does that, you know, they, they, they always fucking put it on you. Have you noticed that shit? The fucking government fucks up. Hey, you know, we're going to have to tighten the belt. Hey, my fucking checkbook's balanced, buddy. Oh, you, you want to take some notes, you fucking assholes? Sorry, this, most of this has to do that I have a fucking cold. You know, I'm just sitting there going, how the fuck am I going to get up and go get some goddamn NyQuil? All right, my fucking head is throbbing. All right. I've been laying low the last few nights. I haven't been doing stand up, trying to fucking beat this thing. And one of the things that I learned is uh, the secret to the Bruins' success this year is that I don't watch them. You know, I sat down and watched this league. They fucking lost to Ottawa. They lost to fucking Washington. And they lost to Tampa. Fucking Tampa. Okay. How, somebody please explain to me how Tampa has professional sports. I, I, have you ever been to Tampa? I mean, these, these fucking people, you, you go to a game down there, it's like, you know, two or less felonies get you a plus one to go to a fucking devil race game. Oh, don't say devil race. Don't bring up the devil, you know, while I feed my neighbor to a fucking alligator. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to stereotype. It's not all. They got some great cigars down there, you know. Although I do think uh, that fucking redheaded cunt who started a fucking religion, didn't he have his boat down there or some shit? I don't know. Every time redheads take a step forward, you know, somebody quits a show and tries to have a movie career or, or a redhead fucking starts a religion and it's just, it just sets us back. You know, here I am trying to be neutral, trying to assimilate to a world of brown and black hair and the occasional blonde, which for whatever reason is celebrated. You know, they're not freaks. They're fucking gods. Okay, I get it. I get it. I mean, I, mean I, I fucking bathe in hell's fire. All right, I get it. I see how this, I see how this game, I see how it's set up. Uh, and what color Corvette would you rather have, huh? Competition orange, fucking uh, Stingray, or would you like to have one that's canary fucking yellow? I don't get it. In a car, orange wins. I think red wins. I don't get fucking yellow Ferraris and shit like that. I never, I never fucking understood that. Anyways, let me plow ahead here. All right. So I'm sitting here, right? Dealing with my fucking lack of pigment. I'm fucking miserable. The fucking Bruins are losing. And then just the cherry on top was this. That, that don't give up on polar bears. All right, let me send you some fucking money, okay? You know what I want? I want your fucking W, whatever the fuck I need to look at at the end of the goddamn year. How much of that fucking money is going to go help a goddamn polar bear? And how much of that is going towards your fucking mortgage? All right? I told you, my new thing, I don't give to these fucking charities. I walk up to the, what, what, hit, you know? I walk up to the fucking person. Do you have the disease that I want to help out? Good, here you go. Here's, here's 20 bucks. You know? You fucking bring a polar bear over here right now, I'll fucking right in his palm, you know, slip it in like I'm fucking tipping a doorman. 
Give him a little fucking, what did I give him? Huh? A little bag of fucking seal meat. I do love watching those things sneak up on seals, though. You know, those big, fat, blubbered fucks. I didn't know fucking, by the way, I didn't know that leopard seals killed penguins. I had no fucking idea. I mean, they got, they got a dentition like a fucking German shepherd. I should have known they were eating something. I just thought they were eating other fish. There's nothing sadder than watching fucking Nate. It's just fucking brutal. You watch any nature show, it's basically, it's like the news. 40 penguins went out to uh, go fish today and only 39 came back. Yeah. So-and-so is still missing. Yeah, they sent out a search party. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's fucking. Where do you turn? You turn to sports. That's what I do. You turn to fucking sports. And you watch your New England Patriots get a little bit of momentum, beating the 1-12 in Cincinnati Bengals. Defense looked great. Offense was, uh, you know, was doing its thing. You know, we got to do something like that. You know, next week is the big fucking test. The Buffalo Bills, the former fucking bullies of the goddamn AFC East. Jim Kelly left, and so did their dominance. It just went out the fucking window. You realize that guy, he only played like 10 years in the NFL. I believe he was a Houston gambler before on uh, the USFL. I went to one of those games. Did I tell you that? I went to see the Boston Breakers against the fucking Washington Federals at Nickerson Field. What is the historical... uh, uh, significance of Nickerson Field. I didn't know this. Nickerson Field was actually the original uh, Braves field where the Boston Braves played, who I believe Babe Ruth finished with them, if you can believe it. Came back to Boston, I think. I don't I don't know that well. But anyway, I didn't realize that. I, was, I used to go to games there all the time when I was a kid. My godfather used to take us all down. We'd go see the BU Terriers play whoever, you know. For some reason, 90, 1997, they just got rid of the football program. That's why I've never quite been a BC Eagle fan because, you know, all my relatives went to BU initially. And uh, so I never got into the Eagles. I did root for them when they had fucking Flutie and was it Glenn Foley? I don't know. I'm a fucking old man. I'm an old, sick man. I can literally feel my heartbeat beating behind my fucking eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit um, anyway yeah the Patriots look good some crazy ones though huh the 49ers fucking lost to the Falcons I was watching my kid all day I missed that Jesus Christ and then Seattle got back on track and beat Carolina they were winning pretty handily then they only won by 7 so I don't know what happened there But I'm sticking with it, man. I'm sticking with my pick. The Baltimore Ravens play the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, I don't know. Now maybe I'm thinking the Ravens. I think Seattle wins it. I think the NFC, you know. Although, what about Green Bay all of a sudden, huh? Who do you like? They put the Bears to bed, tucked them in, right? I believe they secured a playoff spot or something like that. I have no fucking idea what's going on. I just look at the fucking scores and I just start talking. Oh, look at the fucking Lions. What do they do? Um, I'm sticking with that. All right. Here's something for football fans out there. Anytime you listen, listen to somebody before the season start, before the season starts and they're doing their Super Bowl predictions, that's the dumbest shit ever. I don't even give a fuck if they're right. If they're right, that's like watching somebody hit a full court shot. You know? It's just like, okay, you know, if you do it long enough, you fucking, eventually one's going to go in. You can't listen to anybody until like like fucking mid-October. Six weeks in, okay, you kind of start to see who people are. What's going on out there in the league? Then you can make a prediction. That's why I love Paul Verzi. Paul Verzi is a mid-August watches uh, a couple of preseason games 
And he goes, all right, here's my Super Bowl prediction. Are you ready? He always asks you if you're ready. <laughs> Are you ready? And he said, Green Bay and New England. I was like, all right, well, you're picking Aaron Rodgers and you're picking uh, the defending Super Bowl champions. Okay. We'll see how that pans out, right? I told you this shit. And then fucking three weeks in, he goes, dude, congratula- he actually congratulated me. He said it was fucking over. It's unbelievable. Because I, I, I think we beat Miami that weekend. Um, anyway, all right, let's, let's move on with the podcast here. Where the fuck is my laptop? I actually bought a fucking, I don't know why. I know why I bought it. I bought a fucking stupid ass. What the fuck you call it? What are those? What are those tablet things? What do you call them? iPads. Bought a fucking iPad. There's so much I don't give a fuck about this shit, but I just need it for my goddamn job. I, I bought that thing. It stayed in my backpack for like fucking four days. That's how much I don't give a fuck. And the lady at the store is like, "You want to help me? You want me to help you set it up?" And I was like. Uh, I do, but I don't want to stay in this store. I didn't say that, but I, that was my thought. I do, but I want to get the fuck out of here. Um, so I chose that. So tonight I went to go set the fucking thing up. And for the first time ever, I actually knew all my passwords. I was able to set it up and everything, for the most part, went fine. And then I tried to put on the waterproof case and, you know, I'm like a fucking chip. I just rip open the box. I'm, it's weird. If I put together like some fucking Ikea shit, I just lay it all out. I take my time. I just go into this fucking zone. I have not flipped out assembling anything it's in, in like fucking 10 years. I don't know what happened. I've, I've, I kind of fucking, I beat that demon, right? But this fucking I shit, iPhone, iPad, fucking laptop shit. So anyway, fucking trying, you know, everything went fine, setting the thing up. I'm like, holy shit. I think I did it. I already already snapped today because I fucking, my phone updated and I took a landscape photo and I wanted to make it like regular, which I knew how to do. And then I had to spend 10 fucking minutes trying to figure out how to do something that I I knew how to do yesterday. You know, there'd be one thing if there was a fucking reward at the end of it. There just isn't. It's fucking ridiculous. I literally go online and then every video is from like 2013. It's like, that's not the operating system I have. How to fucking blah, 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 blah. Then I find out, oh, there's the button. It, they, they moved it up. So anyway, everything was going fucking, fucking fine, right? And then I go to put the fucking waterproof case on the fucking thing. And they got this whole stupid fucking Jacques Cousteau test I'm supposed to do. Like stick it in a fucking bathtub without the thing in it for a half hour and then take it out and then see if any of the contents that they give you to stick in it are wet. It's like, I, I don't have time for this shit. I'm not going to go swimming with this fucking thing. So I blow it off. And in the process of blowing that off, I lost the instructions and I'm trying to stick the fucking iPad in the front of the fucking thing. And I just, I, I, I you know, I just fucking lost it. Not too bad, you know, because my kid was came into the room, so I fucking chilled out. And then I just sat there fucking, you know, seething. This stupid fucking thing. I was trying to stick it through the front of it. They literally give you a key to fucking open up the sides of it. I finally got it in and I thought I had, I got something, you know, to cover the screen. But there was this blue hard piece of plastic and it had all these fucking words on it. I was trying to scrape it off and I couldn't. I'm like, how the fuck do I get this fucking thing off? And it turned out that that blue thing was just for the, what I thought was the screen protector was just for the fucking half hour water test that I'm supposed to fucking do. I don't know, man. This is just fucking stupid. And then what? Do you know I, I have another laptop? I have a fucking iPad somewhere in my fucking house that works, and I I just can't remember the password, and I cannot figure out. I have the fucking keyboard, the whole fucking thing. I just, I don't know where the charger is anymore. And I'm not throwing it out because it's going to end up in a fucking ocean or a fucking polar bear is going to try to eat it. So I just, I just have it. 
We had some fr- people over, right? They brought their kids over, right? These two guys are like best friends. They sat next to each other. They're young, I don't know, late teens or something. They just sat next to each other, hanging out, just looking at their phones. And for one of the few times ever, I was actually like really happy that I, you know, I don't know. The more I look at this, the way the shit is now, I'm really happy that I grew up when I grew up. You know? <laughs> I got to have a fucking childhood before anybody at school could just show me somebody getting fucked in the ass by a horse. I can't imagine what these kids show each other with these fucking phones, right? There wasn't fucking porno all over the goddamn place. I could enjoy the four seasons, you know, the change of seasons and all of that shit. It wasn't just fucking, you know, 100 degrees or fucking minus 10. Um, no, oh, Jesus, Bill, find the fucking light. We don't all have a head cold, you fucking freckled cunt. Oh, boy, I got the light right here. All right, maybe even a light saber. Um, my episode, it's not my episode, the episode that I was in on The Mandalorian. The massive John Favreau guided Star Wars so and so, whatever the hell you're supposed to say. It aired on Friday. Give it a watch. You know what I mean? Everybody's breaking my balls about something on the thing. I don't know. Should I do the spoiler alert here? I I feel like I need to defend myself. All right. I didn't. All right. Spoiler alert. Fast forward like a fucking minute. All right. You have you can do it in five, four, three, two, one, three quarters, half, point five. This is for fucking people who like are like driving right now. Just turn down the volume. Start reaching for your phone. Relax. Okay. Here we go. Uh, you know what? And it took me so long to do this. Somebody's probably turning it right back on as I say that. All right, here's the deal. I didn't drop the baby yoga. All right, that yoga. I didn't drop the baby Yoda. Okay, the fucking robot dude came out of hyperspace and he didn't tell anybody. All right? Till you're in hyperspace holding a fucking baby and some robot, all right? Like that's not unsettling enough is driving the fucking thing and slams on the brakes. Let, let's see how you do. All right, walk a mile in my fucking space slippers before you fucking come at me. Um, I'm fucking with people just breaking my balls. I, uh, you know, I had a great response. So thank you guys for watching it. And thank you for all the kind words. And now that I've said that, I'm sure all the negativity is going to come in, but I don't give a fuck. All right. I already did it. I already got the check. I already spent it on a fucking iPad. Okay. And that's it. It's over. Um, so anyway, that happened. I actually watched the episode. Um, my wife's always said, you got to watch yourself. You got to watch yourself. I was like, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's not a good thing to do. It's not a good thing to be looking at the side or the back of your head while you're talking. You're watching yourself. It's fucking this, you know, I don't know if the Native Americans have something for that, you know. You know, they always had that thing if you fucking, somebody takes your picture, like a piece of your soul. I can't imagine what they they would think about sitting down watching video of yourself, pretending to be somebody else in a world you're not in. Um, anyways, but I, I did sit down and watch it. Uh, only because I'm into the fucking show, which is hilarious about this whole gig that I have. Like, I, I, I always like, you know, I told you, like Blade Runner, the first one and the one with Ryan Gosling. I fucking love both of those. Uh, Moon with Sam Rockwell. I like shit like that. Um, I never got into the Star Wars thing, but this one, this one, this is the one that you were waiting for. It's like a fucking spaghetti western. I've absolutely loved this and been watching it right along and anticipating and actually looking up when episodes are coming out. So uh, congratulations to John Favreau and everybody over there. Uh, Rick Famuyiwa, I hope I said his name, late last name right was the director of the episode that I did and he fucking crushed it. Um, anyway, let me, let me do some reads here for the goddamn week. Hey, everybody, don't, don't give up on the polar bears, you know? All right, what the fuck am I doing here? What the hell's my password? I forgot it already, right? There we go. Then I type this in here because God forbid, you know, somebody sneaks up and fucking 
breaks into my laptop and sees how I was looking up the all-time passers in the NFL. It's a really interesting list, by the way. If you go and look at it, you see how long how long some people played, you know, and how much the game changed because of Bill Walsh with the fucking uh, West Coast offense. You know, Johnny Nice was the first guy to ever throw for over 40,000 yards. I think he was like the next closest guy during that time only had in the 20,000s. Like he was like the fucking Wayne Gretzky of quarterbacks as far as like he just like doubled everybody. And uh, and now like, you know, I think like Vinny Testaverde has more yards than him. Not shitting on Vinny. I love Vinny. But I'm just saying, you know, Vinny Testaverde, God bless him. He's not Johnny Nice. And I think Vinny will be the first one to tell you that as he put on a jersey for one more... Wouldn't you love to see him come back one more time? It was one of my favorite fucking things ever. There was two quarterbacks that just like Steve DeBerg. You know? I don't, can't tell you how many times I thought that guy retired and then he'd just be holding a fucking clipboard. Holding a fucking clipboard. I bet that guy... I bet his body feels great. You know, most of his career was holding a fucking clipboard and then out of nowhere he would come in and he was just the coolest fucking dude ever. 70s, had that curly noodle hair. He's a quarterback. The guy's a shit. All right, let me, let me read the fucking, what am I doing here? Let me, let me read the uh, advertising here. All right, where the fuck am I? All right, hymns. You've heard us talking about hymns and how they're helping guys look their best. If you haven't yet, it's time to see what they're all about. All right, problem. 66% of men start losing their hair by the age of 35. Uh, once you've noticed the hair, it can be too late. Why do guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can turn to medicine and science? Solution for hymns.com, a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Look at this. You get your hair back, they clear up your skin, your dick's standing up looking for some fucking prey, right? All right. <laughs> Watch too many animal things. That's what those fucking bears do. They fucking peek up. Oh, God. Fucking heartless. Uh, thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. No steak, snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. There's some old references. Prescription solutions backed by science. Answer a few quick questions a doctor will review. And if they determine it's right for you, can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. Try HIMS today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com slash burr. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash burr. For hymns.com slash bar. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. Remember, that's for hymns.com slash burr. Hey, you know what I you know what I think? Uh, I think one day when they when they like have a quick cure for baldness rather than a treatment like like LASIK eye surgery, you know, you go in and you got your eyes open and literally you're seeing smoke coming off your fucking eyeballs, right? And then they go, all right, don't read anything for the next couple of days, which I'd be like the perfect LASIK person ever, patient. Don't read anything. Hey, I haven't read anything in fucking twelve years. Uh. So you do that shit, right? And then all of a sudden you got 2020 vision. You could go fly, fly the goddamn space shuttle. All right? And uh but then after like 10, 15, 20 years it goes to shit, right? I think that that they're going to do that at some point. They're going to come up with some something for baldness, right? And you just, they're just going to be fucking laser in the top of your head. Smoke's going to be coming off it, you know, as you're sitting there with your little fucking tablet watching a couple episodes of Who's the Boss, whatever the fuck you're doing, right? And then you just got this fucking wavy hair for like 10 years, and then just all of a sudden you, you go bald for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's happening again. 
you know, and then it only, you know, like I, cause when I heard LASIK, you can't get it again. So you got to time it, you know, um, like I've been fighting off getting glasses for like six years. Like I, I won't wear them. I just feel like once you get glasses, your eyes are fucked. And I've asked that with a bunch of people who wear glasses and they all agree, you know, they all do. Yeah. Once I did that, then they just, they, they got, I mean, I'm saying my eyes aren't fucked, but they just get more, they get fucked quicker. You know, does that make sense? I don't know what I'm talking about. Shut up, Bill. All right, cool. Stamps.com, everybody. You know what people hate more than anything? Being bothered with little daily annoyances. You know what I'm talking about? I like how that's written like a blues guy, you know? I hope you know what I'm talking Oh, no, that's more like a stand-up comedian. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Keep it going. For Larry, Larry Arons. Hey, how you doing? Yo, you, you, you people, yo. What you people hate more than anything? Being bothered with little daily annoyances. Hey, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Back me up. This was written by a fucking bad 80s stand-up comedian. This copy. Uh, things like being stuck in traffic. Or waiting in line. Or just having to do things you don't have to do. How about sticking a fucking tablet into a... Uh, Waterproof case that you don't give a fuck about. Um, wait, how the fuck could be waterproof? The screen is right there. I guess that part's waterproof. Who the fuck is taking a fucking laptop into the bathtub? Isn't that how you kill somebody? It used to be a hairdryer or a fucking radio. Now you just throw a fucking... Or does it have to be plugged in? I don't know. Anyways, well, guess what? You can get rid of some of these annoyances just by using stamps.com. You know it's stamps. You know about stamps.com. They've been sponsoring the show for over seven years now, and you haven't had to and you and if you haven't tried it, what are you waiting for? The holiday season, wooby dooby doo, is coming up quickly. It's a, it, we're in it. Started with Halloween, rolled into Thanksgiving. Uh, the holidays are coming up quickly. Get started with Stamps.com today so that you're, you're ready for the holiday rush. Stamps.com brings all the services of the post office right to my computer. Uh, you can buy and print U.S. postage for any letter or any package right from your home or office. You can even schedule a pickup with the mail carrier so you never have to deal with L.A. traffic. At least for going to the post office. Uh, I guess we're just, okay. I haven't. I haven't even gotten to the best part yet. With stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Why would anyone pay full price when they don't have to? Stamps.com is a no brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use stamps.com. Right now, my listeners get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Burr. That's stamps.com, enter Burr. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Uh, yeah, I got some announcements here, everybody. Uh, all right. I've added two more Vegas dates next year. All right. March 21st, Las Vegas, Nevada, the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. And then June 1st, Las Vegas, Nevada, the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Uh, there you go. Um, artist presale Tuesday, December 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific Code BURR, B-U-R-R. Public on sale will be Friday, December 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So if you go into a fucking party or you're going out there to do whatever, in March I'll be there and I'll be there in June. All right? Oh, also, by the way, the Patrice O'Neill benefit. There's a few good tickets left. January 27th at the New York City Center featuring Ronnie Chang, Judy Gold, Sam Morell, Andrew Schultz, Cypher Sounds, Rich Foss, uh, Roy Wood Jr., and yours truly. It's going to be a fucking monster of a show. This is one of our best lineups. We got the best mix of the old with the new. You know, People that were influenced by him with people that actually knew who he was. Actually knew him, I should say. Uh, so that will be 
January 27th at the New York City Center in New York City. All right. Jesus Christ. Okay. This is, you know, it's not that bad. Tonight's going to suck. Tonight's going to suck trying to go to sleep. But then tomorrow I should be good. Uh, We got a good one tomorrow night, Monday night, right? Who the fuck's playing? Hey, what the fuck's going on with the Rams? Jesus Christ, they lost again. Having a fucking hangover and a half. Um, all right. Oh, somebody wrote in about the Mandalorian. Uh, I'm not going to read this because I don't want to fucking ruin any of this shit. This guy just said that I did a good job. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching it. And uh, it's really been cool to, uh, you know, my whole world has always been like sports fans and loud drunks and all of that. So to have like this whole new group of people coming up to me, you know. The nerds, they're fucking cool, too. They're polite. They're smart. They're super into the, the sh- you know, the stuff that you're doing. Uh, it's been great. I'm used to, like, sports fan. Hey, Billy Red Tits, go fuck yourself. Love the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are coming up like, hey, uh, just, uh, are you the guy that's uh, in the Mandalorian? I just want to. They're really fucking, they're, 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 they're really nice people. So if you're a jock, stop stuffing them in a fucking locker. They're nice people. Uh, All right. Oh, we got an update here. We got an update. I love when people give me an update. You know, I start talking about some of this shit. I read these emails. I say, write me back. And most times, either people don't or I, uh, or they do and I don't see it. So I don't know, people, just don't give up on polar bears. Okay, it's on you. You need to not give up on polar bears. Not not fucking all these big corporations, you know. Uh, they, they, you know. It's not for them. The polar bears, that, that, that's on your fucking shoulders. By the way, uh, Gordon Hayward's back for the Celtics. Very excited about that, even though for some reason we can't beat the fucking Philadelphia 76ers, who we all know. They're not going to do shit. We, we know they're not going to do shit. I'm kidding. They actually look good. Uh, I'll tell you who's scared the shit out of me as a basketball fan is the Lakers. They look fucking solid. They look fucking solid. Those fucking bastards. They won championship behind us too because they count a non-NBA title as a fucking title. And there was also a mobbed up ref that helped them get by the Sacramento Kings. You know, I just bring that shit up because they're always shitting on the Patriots saying that they fucking cheat. And meanwhile, the fucking Lakers can say they have 16 fucking champions. Okay, all right. You know, okay. One of the referees went to fucking jail <laughs> in that goddamn series. And I'm also still convinced that game seven, if that wasn't fucking fixed the last time we played the fucking Lakers, it was either fixed or I don't know what Rashid Wallace said to those fucking referees, but they were just like, fuck this guy. He's not getting a ring. Uh, call 30 something fouls on one team and only in the teens on the other in a game seven. Put you a fucking whistle. We weren't even fucking hacking them either. It was the worst game seven ever. And it was the Celtics versus the Lakers. I, I, I uh, can't get over it. Still bugs me to this day. I literally watched the Lakers. Rather than fucking manning up and beating the Celtics, they stood taking free throws. Free throw 31. Free throw 32. Quote of the game afterwards, Kobe Bryant. I don't know how we won that game. Well, go dry hump a referee, buddy. That's how you won it. Uh, Get him a new Foot Locker shirt. All right, update. Girlfriend who wanted to stay at X's for Christmas. Uh, dear Bill Burr, look at that. Didn't shit on me at all. Well, it looks like she's dumping me. Oh, there you go. To recap, my girlfriend swung the idea of spending Christmas with her baby daddy to make it less difficult for the kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, but you know what, dude? That's it. You're out. You're out. Your girlfriend already had a kid. You don't fucking need that shit. Trust me, relationships are hard enough. They're fucking hard enough. Unless you met a fucking sweetheart who for some reason dated the biggest fucking asshole ever, which is every coming of age movie that Hollywood has ever made. The cheerleader, you know? She's a sweetheart dating the biggest asshole ever. I love how she wasn't a cunt on any level. It was always put on the guy, right? He was a total dick and then this fucking nerd comes over, hey, you know, ends up banging her, you know? You know why it always worked out like that? Because writers 
writers write that shit. (laughs) They were writing how they wanted their high school to go. Uh, Anyways, the guy says, I approached the situation just like you said, calm and collected. I didn't even open up. I didn't even open with the negative, but instead presented the wonderful dream Christmas I would put on for the both of them. Followed with, I just hate the idea of you spending Christmas at his uh, dot, dot, dot. She said, I don't have to worry about that because he respective, respectively declined. Uh, I found myself still irritated at the fact she even asked, but remain calm. You got to remain calm. I should take that advice. Uh, Then a couple days later, I sent her a good morning text, and she responding saying, I'm a good guy, but she would like to talk. Ooh, yep. All right, my feeling is that this douchebag is playing some game along the lines of, as long as you have a boyfriend, holidays are going to be very stressful for you, and I'm going to make sharing this kid very difficult. You might be right, but you know what, dude? You don't need to be in this shit. So yesterday she tells me she doesn't want to do this anymore over text. All right. Ah, you know, maybe she didn't want to see you cry. I know, I, you know something, if somebody broke up with me over text, I mean, I, you know, I could get over that. I get it. The technology exists, people. Use it. Why would you want to go face to face when breaking somebody's heart? If you could just fucking thumb it out on your phone. <laughs> it's a coward way out. Really? Well, why don't you walk to work and quit taking your car? That's the coward way to work. What? Cause it's fucking easier. Anyway, I convinced her to talk in person with me tomorrow though. So we'll see how that goes. The shitty part is I already bought her a gift that I can't really return because they're all very customized. Buddy, you know what you can't also return is the fucking amount of years you would have wasted with this person. What do you get involved in this Jerry Springer shit? You're young. You got your whole fucking life ahead of you. You know, she fucked that guy without a condom. You didn't. Why the fuck should it ruin your time? I, whatever you bought her, I would use as a stand to put a little fucking kegerator on and drink a couple of fucking beers. I know it sucks right now because you're going through it, but I'm telling you, look at this from the outside. You don't need this fucking guy. Uh, This fucking guy coming in and fucking up your relationship. Anyway, stuff. uh, Anyways, uh, she hasn't changed her status on Facebook, but has hidden it. Oh, dude. You're looking at her Facebook account. Yeah, this is bad. I feel bad for you, buddy. Anyway, so I guarantee you she's being unfaithful. It's all very confusing because not two weeks ago she was gushing about getting married, having kids, moving in, and was very clearly in love with me. We've both been together for over two two years. I think she's thinking unclearly and irrationally. How do I convince her to stay? You can't. And buddy, I know this sucks right now because you're going through this shit, but fucking walk. Okay? This is like, if you can somehow get into your logical brain, this is what your holidays are going to be like every fucking year, okay? It'd be one thing if this was a former fucking boyfriend, but she had a kid with this guy. This guy is in her life for 18 to 22 fucking years. Every fucking time there's a major event in their kid's life, that fucking guy is going to show up. Or... Or you you could you could get you know cry this out, fucking you know, give yourself a good three months to be like what the fuck was that? Cry it out and just fucking move on and have a new thing. I am not fucking dating somebody that has a kid. All right. That is not your fucking problem. I mean, it's, that's like your fucking. You date somebody that has a fucking kid. That is literally like God bless you if you do it. But that is like fucking. That'd be like me watching one of these superhero movies that that one that took like fucking ten years. You know, they made like fifteen fucking movies, and you're jumping in on like the fucking ninth one, and you get like like you're gonna know what's going on. It's probably a bad example because I'm sure that they make it easy for people so they can get more people to watch it. Um, I don't know, dude. You know what? 
whatever you want, I hope it happens. All right? But I'll tell you this. Just from the outside looking in, fuck her, dude. She doesn't deserve you. All right? Um, I don't know. I also have... You know, I can't, I, you know what? I'm not going to say something positive about her because I don't want to drive you back to her because my gut is saying just fucking walk. These boots are made for walking. And that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are going to walk up to a chick who doesn't already have a kid. Woo do 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 do. Ba pa 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 pa. All right, uh, all right. Me too for go- for calling a girl cute. Oh god, why did we ever let these pe- fucking let them out of the kitchen, man? I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm fucking with you. But you know something? I got to be honest with you. A buddy of mine sent me a text. He went on a date with some chick. He kissed her, and she said like a fucking constitution the next day, talking about the kiss and how she felt and what she wished she said. He, all he did was kiss her, and she kissed him back. And then the next day, she had all these different. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ! People don't give up on the polar bears. All right, me too. Calling for a girl, calling a girl cute. Dear Billy Burgundy Balls. I like that. Burgundy's nice. It's a regal color. Uh, I am a freshman in college. And early in the first semester, uh, all of my hallmates and I were in a room together hanging out. We were being a little loud, so the RAs come to the door to tell us to be quiet. Me being the closet, open the door. What? Me being the closet, the closest. Sorry. God, I'm stupid. That was a legit fuck up. I read that as closet, and it's not because I need glasses. That's how I read it. Me being the closest, opened the door, and I and saw a girl standing outside with the RA with the RA badge on. Some of the room asked me who it was, and I said some cute girl in a joking way. The R oh, this is a power thing. You disrespected her badge. The RA asked us to quiet down because it was late, then left. Once I closed the door, this super liberal girl in the room said, why did you call her cute? Oh, oh my God. Because I thought she was cute? Is that all right? Anyways, I said I was only joking, and she said, that's seriously not okay. All right, here's what you need to do right now is get that person out of your fucking life. You need to apologize to her. I said, what are you talking about? I'm not apologizing for complimenting someone. And then everyone else in the room started saying how creepy it was and that I needed to say sorry. Oh, my God. I feel so bad for this fucking generation. Jesus fucking Christ. But when I was... When, when I bring it up now, they all say they were wrong in the moment and it wasn't actually creepy. Yeah, they all caved because they got nervous with this fucking other person. Anyways, I just think this is a good demonstration of how ridiculous college is getting and how over the top feminists are. Um, some feminists, to be fair. You can't even compliment a girl anymore without sexually harassing her. Anyway, anyways, he wrote great. I just thought you would find this interesting and have some good commentary about it. Uh, really love your stuff and go fuck yourself. Yeah, I mean, what you know what you do with people like that? You just listen to them. You let them, you know, let them have their little fit and be like, okay, all right, that's it. No comment or whatever. And then you just cut that person out of your life. You don't want somebody like that in your fucking life. Some fucking asshole just trying to stir things up you know what i love about that whole fucking thing is the person you said it to the person like if they said that they were offended even then it's like what the fuck you know it's not like she was walking down the street by herself you're like hey you're cute i can understand how that's annoying there's a bunch of other people there men and women or whatever it's fucking harmless who are you gonna say it's fucking harmless uh, somebody else, like, I don't know. I don't know. That's a big white chick thing. They like to get offended for people who didn't get offended. I don't know what it is. I think they're just bored. All right. Girlfriend or Ivy League. Yeah, I, I would literally, I swear to God, dude, I would just, and this is, this is the thing. Whatever you see that woman who, who gave you shit about that shit, this is what you do. You just fucking, you, you nice her to death. 
Hey, how you doing? Whatever you do, we'll compliment her, though. I would say, hey, how you doing, sweetheart? You can't say, hey, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, how are you? Good to see you. No matter how cunty she is, you don't give in to it. That's it. She's out of your life. All right. Girled friend or Ivy League, G-I-R-L-D, F-R-I-E-N-D. Girlfriend or Ivy League. Hey, Bill. Oh, wait, you know something? I haven't played this in a little while, have I? It's time for advice. Hey. That's me. And I'm ripping off this melody from somebody else. All right. Uh, where the fuck it? Where did it go? I had it. All right. It always goes to Jeff Beck. All right. Uh, hey, Bill, I'm having a little bit of a dilemma right now, and I was wondering if you could provide me any insight. Hey, you know, I'm not an expert, but if you ask me a question, I'll, I'll answer it. I've always been that way, even in class. What is the numerator? Uh, 17? Uh, no, that number isn't even in the problem. Hey, you ask me a question, I'll fucking give you an answer. Anyways, I'm a senior in high school. But I'm dating a sophomore in college. Oh, God bless you. You need my advice? I need your advice. She goes to college a couple hours away from where I live. We met in high school and I had a decent amount of experience with girls. Yeah, dude, you must be doing something right. But this girl is something completely different. I can truly be myself around her. The problem is I applied early decision to an Ivy League school near me. Early decision is a form of application that includes. I love that you know that I don't know what that means. Okay, I, lo- I, I yeah, you are a, a normal, you are a regular listener of the fucking podcast. Um, early decision is a form of application that includes a contract stating that you are far, if that if you are accepted into this school, you must attend that school. Wow, dude, aren't they like desperate or something like that? That sounds like some shit, you know, where they, they fucking draft some fucking kid out of Kentucky. And they make like a rule that he has to play hoop for a certain amount of time before he goes to the fucking Lakers. Because that's where they all go. Uh, all right. Early decision is a form of application that includes a contract stating that if you are accepted into the school, you must attend this, that school. All right. Applying early decision gives you a better chance of getting into the school because Ivy Leagues don't like it when... They accept students who don't end up going to their school. Uh, you know what? Hey, fuck those guys. You know, th- there really has to be this pushback with regular people. This whole fucking thing, you know, fr- from fucking frequent flyer miles to this fucking horse shit. Fucking American Airlines went to call me the other day. I know it's about my stupid f- fucking miles. Keep the fucking miles. Fucking call me up with your threats. Oh, you got to use these. Bu- oh, do I? Do I got to use them by that day? Take them back. I don't give a fuck. Fucking assholes interrupted my goddamn day. Like I give a fuck about you and your goddamn miles. I fucking hate that shit. We don't like accepting people that don't. Hey, you know, I don't like being fucking six hundred thousand dollars in debt and not having a fucking job afterwards. Six hundred thousand. All right, I went big there. What's the cost going to Ivy League? Four hundred grand a year. Buck twenty five. That puts you about five hundred grand, right? Anyways, I, I was already ex- I was already was accepted into college that she goes to, which is also a great school. But I know I would rather go to an Ivy League school if I could get in. All right, you know what? I got to be honest with you. I, I, I that that's 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 that still means something. Ivy League still does mean something, you know. Anyways, I find out tomorrow. If I get in or not, and I'm probably overestimating my abilities debating this, but I know I want, I don't want to lose this girl. Any advice on how to proceed with this situation or any advice on how to tell this girl that I got in if I do uh, would be greatly appreciated. I'll send you an update once I hear back. Love your stuff and go fuck yourself. Yeah, this is easy. You just sit down calmly and you just say, sweetheart, I love you to death. But it's not my fault that I'm smarter than you. <laughs> um, did you promise her that you were going to go to her college? 
how far away is the Ivy League school? You got to watch out, though. You know, you go to Dartmouth, you join a frat, you got to eat the vomit. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I Look, I would just, you know, I fucking applied. It's an Ivy League school. I want to go. I still want to date you. What is the fuck? I'm, I mean, it, I'm in high school. We're going to a different school now. We're still dating. What's the difference? I want you to be here with me. Here's the deal. You're fucking young. All right? You're really young. You're banging a fucking... Sorry, this is your girlfriend. You're you're in love with a sophomore in college. and uh, But you know, dude, you can't turn down going to an Ivy League school. You got to fucking go. All right? And if she really loves you, she'll let you do it. Okay? That's the deal. And you can very easily spin it. Well, someday, you know, we get married... I'll have an Ivy League degree, which will give me fucking a six-figure job somewhere. We can live like kings and queens, all right? Or I could go to your bum-ass school. No, I'm kidding. Look at this. I'm actually becoming arrogant on your coattails of possibly going to an Ivy League school. Uh, all right, Jesus fucking Christ, my goddamn nose. All right, here we go. Wrapping it up here. A journalist put on earth for you. Dear Billy Deep Throat. That is a reference to Watergate, everybody. I used to be more of an, or a porno, depending on what side of the tracks you're from. I used to be more of a, I can't even fucking breathe. Ah, hang on a second. God damn it. How do I stop this fucking thing? Oh, Jesus Christ. You know what I hate about f- fighting off a cold and then you still get the cold? Is you don't get credit for the days you were fighting it off. Like, rather than it being three days, it's only one day. It's like, this fucking cold, I should have just fucking gave into it. It would have been over. Came on Thursday. And here it is Sunday. I'm still battling with this fucking thing. You know what, Bill? You did fight it off, and then you went outside, and you didn't wear a fucking hat, you fucking idiot. Um, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, a journalist. Okay. Uh, all right. I used to be more of a traditional Democrat. Democratic. You guys are just as dumb as me. I used to be more of a traditional Democratic. <laughs> but with the way things have gotten, I found myself agreeing with your perspective on politics. Well, what is my perspective? My perspective, I'm kind of like, you know, I res- I am liberal. I'm on the blue side, but I respect people on the red side, you know, the first hundred rows. And I expect them to, you know, the first hundred rows of my side. You respect each other, you listen to each other, you find a common ground. That's what I like. Those people in the fucking back screaming and yelling, those fucking lunatics drinking out in the parking lot on each party. I'm not into those people. Uh, anyways, I started paying attention to international journalists instead of the ones served to me domestically. That's a great move. I'm not saying that those people don't lie too, but it's good to, you know, hear what their lies sound like and try to figure something out. I follow one in particular who reminds me of you. She has no problem taking flames to any president or party. I can hear you saying, woo, after all her tweets. Here's a good one. I, I already love this person. It's great to know that there's a fucking journalist out there doing this. Okay. Bush and Obama both invaded nations on lies. Bush and Obama both bombed weddings and hospitals. Bush and Obama both armed terrorists. Bush and Obama both murdered and uprooted millions of innocent civilians. Yep. Values are the same. Oh, wow. And then they have a picture... uh, from Yahoo Entertainment of Michelle Obama says she and George W. Bush Bush disagree on policies, but their values are the same. That's fucking hilarious. All right. Sarah Abdallah at S-A-H-O-U-R-A-X-O. I'm going to be following her. Follow Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore is like that. Great fucking comedian, too. Anyways, I feel like this could really give you material at Hollywood parties 
you want to leave in a kerf- kerfuffle. I, dude, I don't do. I'm old school. I don't bring up religion or politics. You know, you don't do that. You just you don't. I mean, I do it in stand up, fucking around, trying to piss people off. You know, but like I, I don't. I don't fucking do that shit. Uh, anyways, thanks for dedicating your life to making all of us a little happier. Have a wonderful holiday with your beautiful family, you lucky redheaded turnip. <laughs> Well, you guys make me happier when you laugh at my jokes. You listen to the podcast. So it's all, it's all working here. All right. Overrated slash underrated. Uh, underrated. The toe machine at the gym. Awesome cardio and practically a full body workout, especially for your back, biceps, forearm, and, and legs. Yeah, dude. I've never seen anybody who religiously goes to that thing is pretty fucking shredded. I remember Ari Shafir. When he was doing the uh, the fucking uh, Rogan Sober Month thing, he was on that thing. He was fucking shredded. I was like, God damn it. I got to quit booze and get me one of those fucking rowing machines. Is that what the tow machine is? That's what I'm picturing it is, right? Wait, no, that's the row machine. Why do you guys listen to this fucking thing? Hang on, what is a tow machine? T-O-W, by the way, for anybody as dumb as me. Tow machine. That is what it is. All right. Okay. All right. I thought I was stupid there for a second. Why don't they call it a row machine? Um, maybe somebody owned the name and they didn't want to get rid of it. All right. Also, for a little, for as little as a thousand dollars, you can buy one that's foldable, foldable, so you can have this awesome workout at home anytime. Did you just slip an advertisement in here? Because God damn it, now I'm going to look that up. Maybe this will get me abs foldable. Let me see this. Nordic track. I always like Nordic track. We bought that fucking thing way back in the 80s. You remember that cross country skiing thing? Well, let's see. Let's look at some videos here. Let's see what people are up to. The fold, there's something called the folding rowing machine on YouTube. Isn't this something? Oh, that's fucking weak. That's fucking bad. Ah, Jesus Christ. Fuck that thing. Fuck that. Fuck that. Okay. Two thumbs down on that. Let me just see a regular fucking tow machine. Okay. I, I said row machine. Let's see if the tow one is better. All right, that's for a boat. I don't want a tow machine foldable. There's a foldable fucking thing to put a boat on. I want to put my fucking boat on that. All right, tow machine for home. Oh, fuck that. You know what you want? You want the fucking... Here we go. Commercial level tow machine... Now I'm looking at trailers. Are you sure? Isn't it a row machine? It's got to be a row machine, right? All right, guess what? Fuck it. I give up. I can't even fucking look up a goddamn piece of gym equipment. I'm, I'm not good at it, right? Okay, that's it. Thank you to everybody who was uh, watching The Mandalorian. And thank you guys so much for... Uh, I got a real... Uh, kick out all what you guys all said. I really appreciate it. You know what I mean? I, you know, I've done some acting. I haven't done a lot of acting. So I, the, the fact that you guys liked what I did, especially in a world that I wasn't supposed to be in, was fucking awesome. Thank you to John, Rick, and everybody else over there who fucking hooked me up with that gig. And uh, also, this, uh, what is it, Saturday? It's Saturday night. I'm going to be in, uh, I'm going to be in Las Vegas. Yeah, da da da, ba do da do. I'll be, uh, what's up with Trump? Here are my dumb jokes. Talk about your dick. Do a shit joke. Make fun of a fat guy. Um, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be there, uh, this Saturday night with Dean Del Rey, the Del Razor. And, uh, I got a whole brand new hour of shit. And I was going to run it tonight, but I'm fucking sick. So I will be down, uh, I'll be down the comedy store all fucking week. That's my, that's, except I don't think Wednesday I'll be down there, but I'll be down there all week. I'm going to try to run my hour in the belly room Tuesday night. 
I'll be down there Monday. I'll be down there Thursday. I'm going to fucking, you know, shake the cobwebs off after fighting off this fucking cold and then losing. Fighting and losing. It's like I fucking got it to the overtime and I lost to the shootout. All right, that's it. Thank you for listening to my bitch moaning and complaining. Go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday.